Hello everyone, it is mid-March 2021. I've had uh, basically a, a, a spare hour or so that I can come and do a little bit of foraging. It's a fantastic time for foraging. It, I love spring foraging, there's so much just coming out and uh, we're going to share some of them with you today. But the main one we're going to focus on is wild garlic and you can see it here growing behind me and not always but generally speaking when you find it you'll find it in vast swathes it's everywhere if we look across the other side of the lane here as well you'll see it's just carpeting this whole area so you know it's one of the things that when you find it you're probably going to be able to harvest all that you could possibly want it runs right down as far as you can see on both sides of this lane so we are going to harvest some of this today we're going to talk about how you identify it how you make sure that you've not got anything nasty one thing i'm really happy about actually is one of the dangerous lookalikes i found here as well so i can show you the two next to each other so like i say that's going to be the subject of this video i will just quickly point out before we look closer at the wild garlic there's a couple of other Amazing wild edibles here. This here is called garlic mustard or jack by the hedge. I've done a video on this um, and I'll put a link to that in the description if you're interested in that one. This is one of my favorites. And we've also got just here some primrose. This is another really quite common plant. We tend to leave them if there's only a few like there are here but you will find them quite often in really large areas with loads and loads of them in and you don't have to worry about taking them but the flowers make lovely decorations for for salads and things like that but you can eat all of the plant that's the primrose and then obviously we've got our ubiquitous nettles which are everywhere and i'm sure we'll come across two or three other things as we go but let's have a look at the garlic so at this time of year when it's just coming out the ground it's these lovely fresh leaf shoots and they are almost sticky feeling they're not sticky but they've got a, a kind of stickiness to them when you when you rub your your fingers along them can you hear that noise so one of the key identifiers for wild garlic is the smell it will smell of garlic and it's you know an unmistakable smell now personally i love them just as they are they're not strong strong of garlic they do have that garlic flavor but they're not nearly as strong as the garlic clove that you might buy in the shops i love them in salads i think they're amazing in salads they're just this lovely flavor quite often a lot of the things that we talk about foraging for salads if you're not used to this type of food can taste a little bit bitter you don't have any of that bitterness with this plant it's just an amazing addition to salads now at this time of year we are harvesting only the leaves as you can see because there isn't anything else here but in a few weeks they will start to form or maybe a month or two they'll start to form these amazing globe like flowers that you see on top of all of the allium style plants these fantastic white bombs of flowers that look like little fireworks they're amazing they're edible as well they're fantastic you can also eat the bulbs and that's just like a garlic bulb you know a, a garlic clove that you might buy in the store again not quite as strong but uh, just as delicious now as always here we're just on public land so we don't have permission to dig up any plants so I can't show you any of the bulbs but I have shown them on a previous video uh, I think it was called something like five wild edibles of early spring but uh, anyway there you go so we're not going to dig up any of the bulbs here but if you have permission then obviously you can and if you find any growing in your garden then obviously you can and if you do find some somewhere they love sort of this damp woodland environment so if you have somewhere suitable at home you could transplant some and grow them at home let's have a closer look at the leaves 
So you can see the leaves here, the way they taper down onto the stem. That's relatively important. And just the general leaf shape, nice, long and pointy at the top. The main identifier is the smell. The only problem is if you have other things growing in amongst them, sometimes that smell is going to, or the smell won't necessarily transfer, but everything will smell of garlic. Like right now, I expect my fingers smell of garlic. So that's something to bear in mind. So the key identifiers are just the general shape of the leaf and the look of it. But what's more important perhaps is some of the key identifiers of some of the lookalikes. And we'll find one of those to share with you now because I've already seen some growing here. So it won't take me a moment to go and find some more. So here we've got something called Lords and Ladies, Aram Lily, but the common name is Lords and Ladies. And this is about average size, although it's a little bit fatter than you'll commonly see them, a little bit narrower. And as you can see, if you're picking wild garlic, if I grab a few here. So if you're picking a bunch of wild garlic leaves and you've got one of these leaves mixed in with them, it'd be really quite easy to not notice. Now. This is poisonous and this is not. Now it's not so poisonous I've got to worry about touching it. Now there's a couple of really easy ways to tell them apart. Now firstly you might say well it looks nothing alike but when these are younger and I'll try and find a younger one in a moment and uh, show you one that looks a little bit more similar. I mean I suppose here's one here. And as you can see they're growing in amongst the wild garlic so if you imagine that leaf sticking out with what you've picked, it can look quite similar. They are very different. So one of the key identifiers that I first learned was if you look closely, there's a margin all around the edge. That makes them really easy to identify. So you can see they've got the, the vein pattern and it only, runs to, it only runs to this margin all around the edge. It doesn't actually reach the edge of the leaf and then you've got that one vein that runs all the way round. That's one of the key identifiers, but it's also got these ears at the bottom, make it look a bit like a, a spear shape. It doesn't attach to the stem in the same way as a wild garlic leaf does. So they are quite easy to tell apart, but also very important to tell apart. So. Lords and Ladies is one of the most common things you're going to find. If you're out foraging, you will come across these. I see them literally everywhere. They grow in gardens, in hedgerows, in woodland here. So it's a really important one to learn because it is quite toxic. It's going to you know, not do you any good at all if you consume some of this. It's going to taste pretty bad as soon as you put it in your mouth. I've never experienced that, never tried it, but uh, just bear that in mind. But other than that, I don't think you're going to go too far wrong. The main thing is the smell and the shape. But the, when you have a quick look at the leaf and you look out for that vein pattern, then it's, uh, you know, it's really quite easy to tell them apart. The only thing to be aware of is they do grow in amongst them. So just bear that in mind as well. There's a few other things that look kind of similar. Some ferns, but nothing that's going to really cause you any trouble if you're looking for the, those leaf shapes and the smell. So we're gonna grab some of these up now. I just wanna point out actually, I think I've just found down here. So this one, in fact, lots of these down here, they're just starting to shoot up what will be the flower stems. Which are gonna be those amazing globes of flowers later. So there you go, that's how to find and identify wild garlic. Also how to avoid some of its dangerous brothers and sisters.